the disc naming thing was it was a little out of hand this weekend. It was to be bad. Honest. It was bad. The issue I have a few issues with it. Number one, this isn't the biggest issue, but from the Disc Golf Network's perspective, people still don't understand this. So I'm not going to park on it because again, this isn't the biggest issue I have with it, and people think it is. It is free advertising from the Disc Golf Network for these companies. Not the biggest issue. Not the reason I think it should be gotten rid of. But that is something that you you can't get around that. Yes, the companies are paying the players to be on lead card. But again, companies pay players. Players are on lead card. The Disc Golf Network provides the advertising with getting zero dollars from it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to advertise as a business, you need to be paid for that advertising. That's not the biggest issue. The issue I had was nine times out of ten that it was used this weekend added nothing it added no value yeah it almost it, it felt almost like it was ian's thing and so ian used it as a crutch of like i don't know what to say in this moment yeah no, and so 100%. it's like here's i don't know what to say in this moment so here's calvin with his draco mm-hmm. okay if i gotta hear calvin with his draco one more time like i know he's throwing an overstable fairway that's what i'm saying <laughs> is the if the great a great use of it was Drew Gibson going jokery on yeah. the playoff hole? Like, oh, it looks That's like he's pulling jokery. Use. Yeah, that is that because adds to the at shot. At that point, I don't care that you told me it's the jokery or it's an overstable putter. I don't care that part. I now, as a fan, was got something I didn't know because it, le- it led me to be like, oh shoot, he's going putter. He's laying up. Now I will yeah, say, yeah, yeah. Uh, we obviously know what a jokery is, and I'll have to rewatch the clip because I don't remember if he did he say putter. I think he said uh, overstable approach. Okay, because that's important. Is you need to. Also, name what the disc is if yeah. you're not. My biggest problem, though, like I just didn't I, like when like <laughs> Calvin or AB is driving a wide open hole, and he's like, "All right, here's his destroyer." Like, nah, dip. He's an end of a player with a 500 foot shot. Yeah, like, like <laughs> if he course. threw that with a putter, then tell me. But like, you don't add something. Get right. if you're ta- if you're gonna talk, give me something I can't see. Right. Yeah, and then my well, my biggest problem was the fact that I think he was like 80 percent correct. If like, even it was like one, of, it was one of the worst. And it was, I've oh, seen. that's the other thing that's super frustrating. He's like, man, AB's going with a gator here, and then it's a flip up T bird shot. Yeah. It's like what? And then, or they were like one at one point, Calvin had a uh, somewhat important shot, and instead of saying telling me anything about the shot, they just went Philo and Ian went back and forth on whether or not it was a luster firebird. Then it flipped up, and they're like, oh, must not be a firebird. Instead of being like, oh, that's flipping, bringing OB in. They're like, yeah, it must not have been a Firebird for it to flip up like that. Yeah, you know, maybe it's something like a yeah. T-Bird. And then he parked it. I'm like, that you just spent well, 15 seconds while Calvin's worst, running up and throwing, debating if it's a Firebird or not, which does nothing to me, the viewer. The worst one, and you want to talk about free advertising, was him naming Haley King's overstable approach disc as a zone all weekend until like the last round. When she's wearing Innova on her back, <laughs> like you know that she got yeah. sponsored by Innova, and you know that's a Gator, or you or better, a pig or, or, something. or something. But uh, like that, now we're talking about the, that's this is where the advertising thing comes into play. Because like, Discraft Innova, has got advertising, and Innova's the one paying her. Like, yeah. oh man, that like that's just you just can't do that. No, and it, and you and you avoid this problem entirely because I agree. Sometimes I like hearing the names of the disc. It's part of disc. But golf. I like it when it surprises me. Right, but like. You avoid that issue when all you say is she's going with an overstable approach disc here. Well, what I would mm-hmm. like to know is, it, as a fan, because they all fly the same, would it would it give me? <laughs> oh, gosh. Now off the tee again when we're just I think talking we're in the minority here too. I think we're gonna get we are. crushed. We are, but, but you can't care. you can't but deny I that, I wanna, that he wanna, got it wrong so many times. I want to ask you the people who are about to type your comment and hate on me. I want to ask you this question. Two questions. One. Did you genuinely feel like it added something to your experience when it was a obvious answer? Like Gannon is throwing his D1. Once he's called that D1 out once, right? we know that disc. We yes. don't need to hear it. Every single T that Gannon steps on, we don't need to hear it. You're like, oh, you're telling me that Did that add to you? is still a D1? You're kidding me. You're, there's had to be something else in that moment. That he threw like two added. discs the whole like last round. A great example of where it added was when Gannon on the uh, second to last playoff hole changed discs was and went to like that whatever that like zone type prodigy disc is or even deflect what is it called the, the uh, res- it reverb with, no the reverb's a driver it's a it starts with a D the defibrillator <laughs> it's something Kevin Jones knew the distortion disc. distortion give me that boom ten points to Gryffindor uh, when Gannon was throwing the distortion. That was a great use of the disc well, name here's another because it added to me because I was thinking he's going to go with a distance driver or something. He's going yeah. putter. It's like, what the heck? That's surprising. Great use. Well, here's another one. When he, the very next hole, he 
did name the D1, but the reason he named it is because he had thrown a D3 and parked it. And he switched it and up. He, so he switched. He said he's actually switching to the D1. That Good use. makes sense. Uh, the second question that I have, though, is what value you got from the disc name. Would you have got less value if on Haley King's approaches, they said, oh, it looks like she's going with an overstable approach disc. Or... Yeah. Oh, man, it looks like Gannon's throwing that forehand approach that he's been throwing all around. The only time I think I want to know a disc name, and or, as yeah. somebody who's a disc golf enthusiast, I'm going to be able to figure it out pretty quickly. But, I mean, there's in And the if bags you're not everywhere. a disc golf enthusiast, does the disc name even help you? Because right. well, the, the if, only, if, if, when they said Scepter, Drew Gibson's throwing a Scepter, with how involved I am in the sport, that disc name meant nothing to me. Because yeah. I've never thrown a scepter. Right. So they're like, Drew's throwing a scepter. I'm like, okay, what does a scepter do? I said, the only time Explain I want to know... Me. I don't know. The only time I want to know a disc name is if somebody is throwing a disc like all around and it's doing something absolutely puzzling where I'm like, I don't even know. What could that be? Because that's what be? someone yeah, else said yeah. is they were like... Because I was saying how if they just say the disc name, kind of like I just said with Drew Scepter, if you don't aren't in disc golf enough and you just... The first time you've ever heard of a T-Bird is when Calvin threw it and then it flips up and rides to the right. I mean, pretty confusing I'm thinking like, you oh my word. This happened to me multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> Every yeah. in the bag, we With talk a about a T bird, <laughs> and then you buy it, and it's very overstable. Why? Because that T bird's been in their bag for years. They also throw harder. Yeah. yeah, a lot. And so then someone was responded, and they're like, "Well, as a as a disc golf fan, if they say Firebird and the Firebird flips, like I know that's a beat in Firebird." I'm like, "Okay." But the brand new player doesn't. Mm-hmm. So the right. brand new Gotta players would be like, oh, dude, that Firebird that just flipped up, like it literally Heiser flipped and rode straight. Sick. High, that's a sick disc. I need to go get it. No Firebird does that. <laughs> you're going to go buy a Firebird and you're going to be so ticked off. Instead of being like, oh, man, this is a really well-seasoned, overstable disc. It's going to have this flight characteristic. I th- that adds I a lot. I think it just comes down to uh, before each drive, Ian has to just ask himself, or before each shot, does me naming the disc actually add something to this shot like, like is, is it, it su- if and it's it, a good rule of thumb of like am i surprised by this selection right then exactly do it. if one if you go oh he's going with that then maybe name it but if it's just like yep wide open forehand he's throwing a destroyer well of course he is if he's throwing a felon because it's ricky well yeah of course he is yeah there you have it there you have it. <laughs> that's that Commentary. Uh, go it, ahead roast us we're i'm bring, not you're not changing my mind DOS back to the no booth, baby. don't do that don't do that dawson philo overall though <laughs> overall though the Disc Golf Network coverage this weekend, very great. I Incredible. Think, the best. I think it was the best coverage they've put out. 